Good morning guys. So today we got a bunch of little stuff to do. So one of the things on my list, the big one, the first the purse the first part of my list is to send out these cylinder heads to Texas Speed. I don't know how crazy we're gonna go because these aren't these aren't like great heads. Like they ported the ones on the 240, but those are 243 heads, so those are really good. These are 706 heads, so they're kinda like kind of like middle lower bottom of the barrel type of gm stock heads so probably not going to go too crazy on them just give them like a refresh make sure that they're not like leaking past the valve seals or anything crazy or i don't know whatever they deem fit they have like an entry level port job and they know the combo and everything so let's figure that out uh seven dollars worth of gorilla tape later they are ready to go to texas speed Hope you guys enjoy the way I wrapped them up. I kind of kind of taped the two heads together by the surface and just put them in there with a bunch of cardboard around them. Should be good. About 52 pounds worth of 706 cylinder head fury. All right, cylinder heads are out. Uh, $105 to ship them to Texas. Not terrible for 50 pounds. They'll be there Wednesday-ish, something like that. Another question that I saw about this maybe a comment slash question was why why would you not you know pull the rods and pistons out and do the rings and the bearings while I have it to this level because then I am really going down a rabbit hole if I if I do the pistons and the rod bearings and the main bearings then I kind of get into the point where it's like well you might as well do upgraded rods and upgraded pistons and then you know you got to do upgraded um like rod bolts and rings and upgraded bearings and like basically at that point it's machine shop territory because i might as well do new cam bearings and it just keeps going so it never really ends and then you know before i know it i'm months into waiting on parts and putting together a motor that is just a iron 5.3, not exactly what I want going forward. So I'm just trying to keep from going down that rabbit hole. And if I keep the bottom end intact the way it is, I will not get into that rabbit hole. Just leave it exactly how it is. Put a new cam in it, put a new oil pump, put a new, you know, timing chain and everything and just slap this thing back together instead of uh dive into all that it's not gonna see all that much boost it's gonna see you know 15 pounds of boost at most at most it'll see 15 pounds of boost maybe that's on the high side of what an lsa can kind of put out that's kind of my thought process once i get a gen 4 motor i'll uh i'll go through that or maybe work with texas speed who i just sent the heads to and put together a cooler combo for this thing something that makes a little bit more bottom end torque like i was saying yeah, so that's kind of my thought process, but I got a couple little things to do. All right, Camaro's back on the lift, up in the air, and I am cleaning the rear end. There was so much, there's still so much grime on this rear end. Like, look at that. It just gets dirty. Street miles, you know? So I'm cleaning it all off. I'm gonna nut and bolt everything, make sure everything's tight, make sure all the fittings are tight. You know, no leaks or anything crazy. Uh, I'll probably change the diff fluid. It's been a little while since I've checked it and changed it, so I'll probably change that. Trans fluid's good, oil's good. Just kind of going through everything, make sure everything's still in its same, you know, location and same tightness on everything. Nothing's wearing, nothing's loose. Good practice to do, you know, before anything. I haven't driven it in a while, but I haven't done this in a while either, so. Good to do. Make sure everything's good, nothing's bent. I also have this Motion Raceworks safety checklist. I don't know if they still sell this. They sold it a few years ago, and I've had it, you know, on the uh, door for a while. So they have like a checklist of things to go through, and it's just good to go through everything and make sure you're good. So, yeah, I like, I like this. It's a solid checklist. I need to get a marker for this. All right, I'm gonna pull this balancer off too because. I just got the balancer puller. See, this is like a cheapy one. I thought I had one, didn't have one. So let's see how this one works. 
hopefully it does work. So, time to pull a balancer off. These are pretty simple. I don't know if you can, I'm sure most of you guys have seen how a puller works. It just kind of hooks to there, and then it has a pin that goes into the crank, and then you tighten it out, and it pulls the balancer off the crank. Pretty simple, but obviously I'm not using this balancer, and even if I was, I would still have to pull it off and you know do the oil pump and everything with it off i also got this because this is something that is going to need to be done this is a crank pinner so when you put a blower on a car you have to pin the crank so you don't spin the balancer because you add a lot of stress to the balancer so i gotta pin the crank once i have the new balancer and then just put this motor back together It'll be nice to have this thing off. This motor will look $200 better. Kind of wild. These uh, OEM truck balancers don't look that heavy, but this thing's actually 10 pounds. Time to uh, do some car swapping now. So I'm going to pull this Camaro out and pull the 240 in, put the 240 up on the lift because I want to get underneath it. And there's a few things that I would like to see once it's on a lift and the diff is leaking. So I'm going to see if I can figure out that issue. That's pretty much the main problem. The diff leaking kind of bugs me. Well, this is right now it's in my garage and it's leaking out of the diff. It's like the diff is like the only thing I didn't touch on that car. The only thing that I didn't touch, I have to go back and touch. So, learn my lesson. 240's in, time to first try lifting this thing up. This is probably my smallest car, and then that's the biggest car, so they both fit in here nicely, which is exactly what I was going for. Still got some room if I wanted to come forward with this thing, it's, it's really not too bad. This thing is probably back as far as it needs to go. That car is like 50-50. This car is definitely not 50-50. This thing's definitely pretty nose heavy. It does have like a 15 gallon cell in the back, but that's also fuel dependent. Rear end and everything in this car is pretty light. Doesn't even have glass back there. So this car is definitely nose heavy. So I gotta be a little more conscious on this one with how it's loaded. Off the ground, a little shake test. Oh yeah, that thing's good. It ain't going anywhere. So I went to the pinch welds in the front even though I didn't want to because I couldn't get to this frame rail because of how low the whole car is and it seemed a little too inboard honestly, I don't know. But these pinch welds are so destroyed anyways, I don't think it matters. So went to the pinch welds and then I went to the rear subframe right here. Diff is leaking right at this bottom seal. So I think that honestly means I'm gonna have to pull it out, which I'm not exactly excited to do because it's probably gonna be messy. Yeah, but it's gotta be done. Um, exhaust is holding up pretty good still for my hoopty ass install because there was no hangers and I didn't make very nice hangers. Uh, good to check through everything. Hasn't, haven't been under it since we did slide it that one day, me and Jeremy. And then these fittings are super difficult to tighten. I see some oil on the back of the pan. They are so tough to get to. I've seen a lot of people pull these diffs on the ground on purpose, just because it's easier to just kind of like drop it onto the ground. But I think I'll just use that table, drop it onto the table, and then like lower it down enough once it's all the way out to put it on the table. But still a little ways from that. Axles out, or at least just unbolted. They don't have to come out fully drive shaft out and then these four bolts and then these two and I think we're good nothing else interferes with it which is nice every other diff I've ever pulled there's like stuff under it and you gotta like shimmy it out and it's like a whole thing I mean I haven't pulled this one out yet but it doesn't seem like that so let's see all right well let's get to work diff is out and uh sitting here listening to the radio 
and they're talking about is hot dog a sandwich. Do you guys think hot dog's a sandwich? I don't think so. I think it's more of a, uh, they called it an American taco. I think that's pretty accurate. But diff is out. Uh, I haven't even seen the vent before. I assumed it had a vent, but maybe that's clogged. Maybe I'll clean that out as well. But I'm gonna pop this front cover off, see what the deal is with this gasket. Easy to get out. Uh, probably not gonna be that fun to get in. <sighs> I need to get a trans jack. It's on the list. It's yeah, but so easy to get out. Honestly, this car is a breeze to work on. The V1 to pull out the diff, you have to take apart like the whole suspension pretty much because you have to take out the axles. It's, it's like a whole thing. It's, it's a whole thing. And it's like a four man job it feels like, but I don't know. This car is just easy. So time to pull this thing apart, see what's under the cover and we can uh, go from there yeah like i was literally able to take it out with just this stuff i've seen james actually change an axle on a 240 in about two minutes at the track so that tells you anything you don't even take off the wheel he was able to just get the axle nut pull it out like not even jack it up not even take off a wheel and change the change the axle so if that tells you anything it's looking pretty good in there honestly um yeah, so just have to clean up this surface and put some fresh RTV on there. There's probably something better to use, but I like RTV, simple. Draped off all the old gasket maker. It looks like there's a little crack right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's not. It's just a uh, casting imperfection. There's a few of them, but no cracks that I can see. So I think it was just a not enough uh, gasket maker on there. So scraped all this off. And scraped all this guy off and uh, we're ready to mate the surfaces again tighten it back up put it back in and uh, hopefully it won't leak definitely want to wait until it's fully dry before I put any fluid in it so kind of just waiting until it dries anyways to put it in but I wanted to give a quick shout out to these chairs this is like a Viper stool it's called made in the US and it is replacing my old Harbor Freight one and this thing is killer highly recommend them because you know, the old one didn't really get over like these large cracks that I have, but this one does and it is way more comfortable. Here's your daily weather update. It's raining. So a little word of advice, if you work by yourself like me, ratchet straps are your friend. These are basically my star employee around here sometimes. They hold up everything from transmissions to motors to diffs. Uh, yeah, just stretch that out here and it was basically my third arm so I could rest the diff if I needed to. I didn't need to, I was able to just kinda pop it into place and hold it up while I tighten these up. So I got those started and these kinda hold themselves in place but pretty easy deal. Diff is back in, drive shaft's back in, axles are tight, drive shaft is tight and we are ready to put some fluid in this thing. I'm just gonna give it a little bit longer to fully set and dry this gasket maker because I don't wanna uh, uh, I don't want to have to pull it out again. It wasn't bad, but you never want to have to do a job twice. So just waiting for this to dry all the way and then we'll put some fluid in and see if it, uh, see if it leaks. Not too bad of a job. Been using this makeshift pallet table as a uh, kind of workbench that I can move over to here because definitely need like a movable workbench. Eventually I'll get one of those ones on wheels that's like nice and tall and nice, but for now, the old free 99 one with the Texas Speed fender cover is doing its job, so. I don't use fender covers because none of my cars are nice enough to protect the fenders. Fluid's back in and it should be good to go now. I've been kind of just tying up a couple odds and ends. I added an extra couple P-clips to the fuel lines to keep them from uh, you know, bouncing around and hitting the exhaust or anything couple other miscellaneous things, retightened all the bolts everywhere, did a quick nut and bolt on it, make sure everything's good. Uh, I'm looking at alignment stuff, but honestly this sucks because everything on this is like so old and corroded that you basically can't loosen or tighten anything. All these himes are just like, you know, beyond repair in a lot of ways. Like I can't even tighten them. Like these ones are probably good but can't do enough with just those. Uh, it's, it's kind of a tough deal, honestly. 
because everything has been on here for the past like 15 years, 10 years, something like that. Good morning guys. So back in the shop today, got a haircut and ran some errands. You can see the shop door is open, which generally means one of two things. Either I'm moving cars around or the AC is not working for some reason. And my hair is looking really short. It went a little shorter than normal, but it's making my head look real circle. Real round head over here. It is unfortunately the worst of the two. The AC unit did break. So I have this American Standard unit out here and the fan stopped working. So I ordered a new fan motor and it should be here tomorrow. Hopefully I can just replace this and call it good. I can hear it getting power. It's trying to spin, but it's just not. So from what I can see, I just have to uh, take this off put the new one on and we are good to go. So shouldn't be a bad job. Picked up a transmission jack. So that's pretty exciting. I've needed a transmission jack. Well, I've needed a lift and then the transmission jack is kind of just the, uh, you know, the needed part of having a lift at this point. So went out and got it in one of those. And then I also finally got one of these guys. So this is the Milwaukee top off where you put your battery and then you have uh, 120 volt using a 12 volt system before, but the 120 volt will definitely be a little more efficient and really easy to use this guy now instead of uh, the old way. The old way, the 12 volt used to kill the batteries like instantly. I don't understand. Maybe this will do the same thing, but I'm hoping not. But regardless, I kind of needed one of these. NOS bottle warmer for once we get back to racing. It's all put together now. Uh, one major complaint, I guess two major complaints, is this thing is slow as can be. I'm used to using like the foot crank ones and those go pretty quick, but the foot crank ones are also like $700. This one is um, $200 on sale and it takes up a lot less space. I won't use it enough to really need like the beefy foot crank one, I don't think. Ideally, you know but it is so slow. Like, let me just give you guys a little. That is a full crank. Look at that. It's hardly even moving. I mean, it'll get the job done though, but I guess it'll be slow. It's a little, uh, little flimsy. All this stuff is a little, little shoddy, but It'll get the job done. Honestly, most of its use will probably be this. Drain pan holder. Because I'll do a lot more oil changes and fluid changes than I will do transmissions, hopefully. So, makes a good drain pan holder. I was doing a little uh, testing with a grinder and like a, a wheel that's made to do this and it does it pretty well. I just have to do it and I don't want to because it's a pain in the butt. But eventually I'll just do the whole thing and then we can go up on this. <laughs> kind of have to do it to this whole little area right here where all of them meet. I still need to seal this up. So, I mean, it's, uh, it's good. It works perfect. It just has a very slow leak. I mean, it's sitting on the locks, but yeah, you can see a little leak just around the seal right here and on top. So I need to drop this whole like three piece configuration and see what I'm working with there. I don't really want to mess with it because it's not that big of a leak where I, I worry about it, but probably should seeing as I do go under it, but eh, I'm never under it when it's going up or down and it's on locks. That's what the locks are for. So maybe just I'll see how much drips over the next few hours and see if it's really a big issue. There is a track rental this Friday, so maybe we will break the Camaro out. It kind of goes against my religion to race in the summer, but I might do it anyways because I've been kind of uh, eager to go test out some of the stuff on it and make a pass at it because it's been, it's been a while. All right, well, I think I'm going to end it there. Got a few things accomplished, kind of just a... Uh, all-encompassing video doing some normal shop work got a lot of things coming for chip hopefully next week sometime i can start tearing into it 
I don't want to do anything until it is ready to go, you know, LS. I don't want to start taking it apart because then it'll just be a dead weight on the lift. But very soon we should be able to get that thing in here on the lift. There it is out there, ready to come join the party of not being a 100 horsepower vehicle. Like I said, guys, that'll do it. Just one of those slow videos not a whole lot going on not a whole lot for me to do today waiting on parts and a lot of other things so just the uh kind of the way it goes sometimes so thanks for watching guys keep it saucy i'll see you next time